Hi, Scorpios. So I'm going to relay some messages for you first, and then we're going to go into the reading for this month, okay? And my apologies for the delay with this reading. I had um, a lot of work that I needed to catch up on. It was hard for me to do this reading for you guys, but um, I just wanted to, you know, take the time to do it properly. So it took a little bit longer than I expected. But anyways, um, I feel like based on this spread, all the cards are very solitary, okay? So all the cards indicate one person except the Six of Cups. But the Six of Cups can be um, very focused on memories. It can be very focused on nostalgia and things like that, looking back at the past. And so the energy for this month, it feels as if you want to be left alone. You have um, things that you want to catch up on. You want to just, you know play music, like put your headphones on and just nose to the grindstone and get work done. And I feel like you're using, possibly using work as a big distraction as well. And there's nothing wrong with that because um, you're best when you're left to your devices. And I feel like it's a little bit of the energy for this month is you wanting to be left alone. And while you're doing that, a lot of things are happening around you that you'd rather not engage in, that you'd rather um, kind of like brush aside. So it's important for you to, you know, rejoin the community of people and to, you know, allow people to come in and allow yourself the opportunity to, you know, say yes to invites, say yes to, to opportunities to reconnect with other people. I feel like the month also denotes a lot of uh, home family situations okay like home family interaction home family events um i do see many of you doing like some major repairs within the home this is usually renovation remodeling as well as fixing things um you know like the the image of you know like spraying something on the door hinges so that it stops squeaking and then pulling up the, um, you know, those those wooden floorboards so that it stops squeaking, uh, cleaning out the drain, cleaning out the cabinets, cleaning out things that you don't need or things that have expired or just cleaning out things for spring cleaning or whatever it is. Um, that energy is coming through. So you're very, very busy and I feel like you're purposely keeping yourself busy. And uh, you're cleaning things out. You're making the home environment more habitable and you're also doing that mainly because there seems to me to be opportunities where you're getting rid of stuff decluttering your environment selling lots of things that you don't need possibly donating them or even selling them or even giving them away to friends families and things like that so you might have you know siblings and uh, even people coming in and they're like do you have this do you still need it if not can i have it or can you help me transport this item? Can you help me find this? Can you help me find that? So you have lots of interactions, uh, lots of people coming in asking you for things. Um, I don't feel like they're doing it in a um, in a uh, self-serving type of a way. I feel like you know it's things that you don't need. They're going to take it off your hands anyway. So I do see a lot of spring cleaning and a lot of decluttering, a lot of clearing out junk, a lot of just uh, fixing things up, okay? Some of you are also doing this because you're transporting items from one place to the next. And I also see this element about, you know, um, getting into contact with old friends, old neighbors, family members as well. So possibly some type of a party, some type of an event, some type of a, a situation where there are a lot of people coming together. You might be hosting. Um, you might be going to their place. You might be helping them clear up the space so that... Um, the venue looks and looks presentable for this event, okay? So this usually, uh, um, it, it revolves around children. So it could be like a baby shower, it could be like a, a children's birthday, it could be a play, a recital, you know, whatever it is, like a, even a performance with children. And then there's like a um, reception or like a party afterwards. So some of you guys might be hosting this at your house and so you're cleaning up. Others, you're possibly cleaning up or um, 
decorating a venue. So there's a lot of things happening here, and I feel like it it, it, it culminates around this major event where you're going to come into contact with a lot of people. So in the meantime, you're keeping very busy, and you're keeping your nose to the rhinestone, and you're not really getting distracted. There are invitations as well, okay? So this is like romantic gestures, romantic invitation, and I have a very strong fire sign here, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. Usually, this seems to me somebody who's really... Um, like be lining lining it for you. It's somebody who's very interested in you. They could potentially reside from a far away location, so like like they're not in your vicinity, and um, they're coming to see you. Um, so I feel for many of you, this might be a new person, okay, outside of your vicinity. Um, they're coming to see you, and they're really, really, really digging you. So I have here Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, uh, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And this is somebody possibly culturally, ethnically um, different from you as well. So I do see a um, an interracial type of a, a dating situation happening here. So they might not even resemble this sign. They might not even be a fire sign, but they're just culturally, ethnically different from you. And I feel like they're coming in with a helping hand, or they're just like, you're. So, they're telling you, you're such a stick in the mud. Can you, you know, relax and stop working and go on a date or go out and have some fun, go dancing, go bowling, um, go camping, whatever it is. I feel like you've got somebody in your midst trying to pull you out of your funk or try to um, pull you out of your dragon's lair so that you can do other stuff with them. In the meantime, I feel like financially, uh, that's where your, your mind is at. And this is what I've noticed overall with a lot of water signs especially cancers. You guys are usually very good with managing your finances, but with cancers, and in general water signs, uh, when you are financially like not where you want to be, that's when all social interaction just stops, and that's when you, you know, become a hermit. You hide out. You don't really interact with people. You draw back, and you don't do fun stuff, and you, you're like this. You're, you're constantly working. When financially you're not where you want to be, you just kind of shut yourself off from the world. And as is your nature, you don't tell other people what's going on with you. You kind of shut down. And people around you are trying to, you know, figure out, like, what's going on? Where are you? What are you up to? What are you doing? And you just kind of sequester yourself and you don't tell them what's going on. So I do see some financial worries that are actually in the picture. I'm also seeing some of you, um, you're, you're writing out invoices and the other people might not be paying or they're telling you, oh, I'll pay next month, I'll pay in two weeks, I'll pay, you know, in two months' time. And so that is really interfering with your cash flow. So you might have rendered a service to them and then they're, they're being a little bit flaky. I feel like they're waiting on things too, so they're going to come back and um, pay you. It's just, you know, the timing is really not on their side either. I see a lot of contractors and especially some lawyers um, where, you know, you're, you've rendered a service and you're just waiting for payment. And so you have projects that you've already finished, but the payment's not coming in yet. And I feel like August, the time of Leo, is when the situation is going to clear up and that's when it's going to alleviate that financial burden for you. Okay, so just hang in there. Don't think about worst case scenario. I feel like they're going to come through and, and pay you what they owe you. It's just going to be a little bit delay. And for future reference, you might, you know, put a little bit of disclaimer um, when you're rendering a service, you need to tell them, you know, you have 30 days to pay up from the date of receipt of, you know, this invoice so that you can protect yourself and cover yourself, okay? So have like a little bit of a disclaimer uh, in your, on that invoice slip so that you can prevent this scenario from happening. So that, that's what I'm feeling here. Just uh, a lot of things on the work front. Let me talk a little bit more about this cluster of cards. I, I feel like this is a relationship card, and I usually don't think of it, you know, uh, the magician as a relationship, but 
it just screams out to me a relationship, okay? And this can be work or or even romantic relationships. But what I feel is this. This is like wanting to go solo, wanting to make it on your own, really wanting to test your skills and your capabilities and feeling very optimistic about everything that you've learned, everything that you, all the knowledge that you've gained and wanting to apply the knowledge in a practical uh, front, okay? So in a practical way, so applying knowledge. I feel like many of you have been under somebody else's wings. Like you're, you've been, I, I want to say protected and kind of pampered and kind of um, mentored by another person, someone who's very, you know, that you look up to, that you really, really admire because this is what I'm, I'm getting here. This is you and this is somebody that, you know, um, taught you a lot. They might have been a mentor to you. They might have been a supervisor, a boss. They groom you for a position of greatness. And at this point, they're removing themselves from the picture. And I feel like you have to rely on your inner knowledge and everything that you've learned over the years to make that next transition to kind of like spread your wings and fly. Are you going to float or are you going to sink? Are you going to be able to do the job well? And I feel like you're very, very optimistic because for the past eight years, possibly, you've been doing the same thing. And for the past eight years, you've been honing and perfecting your skills. And when a Scorpio person, uh, when they do something, they do it really, really, really well. And you're like the, the Virgos of the water signs. When you do something, it's, it's done meticulously well and uh, it, your knowledge of it is very in-depth, okay? So you don't have superficial knowledge of things. When you learn something, you learn it thoroughly and people can quiz you and you would know how to respond. Like the in, you, you understand the ins and out and the mechanics um, as to how something works, all the interrelated parts. So you have very thorough uh, knowledge. And at this point, you feel like you can take on the mantle and you feel like you can, you know, do it solo. Um, I feel like there's a partnership here with the Six of Cups, which might potentially hold you back. Okay, so this is like promises made to another person. This is somebody that, you know, you might have grown up with. This is somebody that you've known really, really well and um, it becomes comfortable and relationships matter a lot to you guys and i feel like as long as you have that history with somebody um it's really hard for you to be free of that person okay so i feel like there is a very pleasant uh, partnership possibly in work but i feel like it's hindering both parties development it's hindering both parties ability to really spread their wings and test themselves and fly and soar so questions regarding do I do it alone or do I stick to this partnership and then likewise I, I feel as if many of you are in a relationship where the other person is very 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 independent I feel like the other person um, it's like you're in a relationship with them but then they behave in a way where they think they're single not that they're cheating or anything like that, but it's like they do things. They might be a little bit inconsiderate where they do things without consulting you. Like you're in a relationship and, you know, you might, for example, live in an apartment together, for example. And then they want to get a dog and rather than asking you, hey, should we get a dog? They bring home a dog. Or they, they buy like a bunch of big ticket items for the, the house or for the apartment without consulting you. And it's like, no, we need to, you know, have these conversations before you start going crazy with all these new additions to the house. So that's what I'm sensing here. And I feel like, I feel like that's something you kind of need to work through. And, you know, it, it's really strange to me because I feel like you've got somebody, relationship or even work partnership okay you've got someone that's really admiring you and it could be somebody that is um, like a, an admirer in a work environment 
they see how eloquently you speak. They see how smart you are, and they see how you know great you are at taking charge of situation. They they admire your leadership capabilities. They admire your knowledge, and they really, really are digging you. And I I feel as well. There's a huge age difference, huge age difference. And you might have you know that、um, same fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. That's constantly telling you, come hang out with me, come、um, you know do stuff. And I feel as if some of you might be already in another relationship, possibly with an Earth sign, so、uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn.、Um, that relationship is on its way out, and you have a new person that's really admiring you and giving you a lot of attention. And you know, even if you're in another relationship, you you you're basking in that attention. You like the attention. You like the fact that they admire you. And I feel like you know, it's it's always flattering. To feel like somebody is looks up to us, admires us, and wants to be in our company, like it's it's flattering.、Um, but the only challenge here is this is a warning here. The Seven of Cups. This is like the fantasy, possibly fantasizing about another person, even though you might be in a relationship. And I see a huge age difference here with this Page of Wands as well as the Magician. And it seems to me like, okay, so in some scenarios, it's almost like you're the other person is a lot younger than you, and they're very starry-eyed, and you're just like you're young enough to be like you know my niece or my nephew or my child. So th- there's that. I want to say ethical dilemma. Okay, age is not really a big factor, but I feel like. In this situation, the age difference is so pronounced that it might raise some red flags from your end. And then I also feel, you know, you could be the younger person, and you have somebody that is older that you're really digging, that you're really admiring, and you're kind of like、um, they've got you wrapped around their fingers, like you're really digging this person. And it takes a lot for you to feel that enamored with another person. You really admire them, and they might be in your work environment. And I feel like there is a power differential as well. So just be careful about that, okay? Make sure relationships are not a, like covert power plays, because you're naturally very drawn to that. It's very exciting and very sexy to you guys. But just make sure relationships are on even footing. Otherwise. That power differential over time it can breed a lot of insecurities and resentment, and it's just not a good place to start a solid, firm relationship to begin with. So once again, let me talk about this card. This is about fantasies,、uh, fantasizing about what could be, what can be, and you know, even like. Thinking about taboo relationships, stepping out of the relationship, dating somebody who's like significantly younger, or dating somebody who's like your subordinate, or dating somebody who's like your boss. This is like those you know fantasies. Okay, when it's in the reverse, it's almost telling you. Coupled with this high priestess, it's almost like pay attention to the warning signs, listen to your intuition. Don't let this fantasy run away with you. Look at it a little bit closer. Look at the potential pitfalls. So don't succumb to this, you know, this sense of oh everything is going to be、um, amazing. Because that's the nature of the fantasy. We want it, and so we imbue it with very positive, highly romanticized and highly idealistic properties. When in fact. When the reality sinks in, you're going to realize there are a lot of things here. There are a lot of、um, there are a lot of potential pitfalls. Okay, so that's what you want to be a little bit careful about. And the last thing that I want to end this on is we have here the magician and the high priestess, and both of these can be you. The energies are so different, right? Like the background, blue and yellow. So the energies are very, very, very.、Um, I want to say it's opposite, but it doesn't have to be in conflict with each other. So the 
this is what I call like a really good couple. Okay, and it's like this is somebody that works in the public limelight, and this is somebody that works behind the scenes. So you might have somebody that's kind of like you might have have a, a perfect match here. Where one person, it could be a work partnership where one person deals with the public and the other person manages all the logistics behind the scenes. So the the only potential pitfall of this is this person is getting all the credit, even though this person is doing a lot of the work. So make sure those you know power dynamics, those、uh, things are balanced out. Okay, and then on the flip side, I also feel like you might be in a relationship. And you also need to be cognizant of the fact that one partner is like possibly, you know, somebody is like a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad, and then the other partner is like the breadwinner. And the person that is the breadwinner, they're like, I'm working all day. The other person is not contributing anything. Well, that's not really fair. The other person might be home with the kids. Might be home cooking and cleaning, so all of that work is also、um, not valued. It's like undervalued, or it's not valued properly. So there are subtle issues here when it comes to somebody like getting the recognition in the outer world, and the other person is not getting the proper recognition that they deserve. So you want to be very, very careful and give credit where credit is due. And also allow the other person their time in the spotlight. Give give a shout out to that person.、Um, let the world know that this person is a major player or also a major contributor. And then I'm also seeing you know a partnership that works really 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 well because you're incorporating the energies of these two very disparate people. This is an extrovert and this is an introverted person, and you know the the two of you work really well because you have your prescribed roles and you have like agreed upon what we're going to do, how we're going to delegate, and what responsibility falls upon which、um, person in the partnership. So it seems to me like a very very good match. Just make sure that. You don't get pigeonholed into the same routine. Okay, so that's my only concern. As a fixed sign, it's really easy for you guys to get pigeonholed into certain roles, certain expectations, and and then it's hard to、uh, recover from that. I'm feeling like there's like one last message here, and I'm trying to. I, I usually look at the、um, the outer cards, especially the angles. And what it denotes to me here? Let me just put them together. You really have to work on building up wealth and stability. Okay.、Um, I feel. I feel like some of you, you might have like、um, a lot of、uh, other. Well, you might have a lot of other tr-、um, planetary aspects. In your chart, and you know, like a, a, let's say a stereotypical Scorpio. Scorpios are really, really hardworking, <clears throat> and it, especially when they're emotionally invested in something, in a love relationship, in a partnership, in a work project. When they believe in something, they work and work and work and work really, really, really hard at it. And sometimes they stay way past its expiration date, so they don't know when to stop. So that's the only danger. So Scorpios are very committed. But I feel like some of you might have this concept where you start things and then you don't finish them. Okay, so you might have like a lot of fire in your chart. You might have a lot of air, and you might lack the earth component to really start projects and finish them. That that consistency and that dependability and that you know,、um, it's a marathon, not a sprint mentality. And I feel like you might have abandoned projects before they came to fruition. So this is a sign for you, and and for this month, this is a sign for you to be consistent. To you know, don't. If you're dealing with a client, if you're dealing with a client, don't cross them off the list until they have proven themselves to not be able to follow through. So don't cross them off the list too prematurely. 
So it's like being a little bit more consistent, giving people the time and, and being diligent as well, okay? So I feel that there's also this element here about paperwork and contracts. Making sure you smartly cover yourself so that you're not getting the short end of the stick, so that you don't need to get you know legal counsel involved. So that means when you're drawing up an invoice, when you're drawing up a contract, review it multiple 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 times okay be smart about it and and read the fine print don't sign anything until you read the fine print because i feel like um you might get yourself in situations where you're ending up like paying a lot more than you initially thought and you're losing out on money or the other people are not holding their end of the bargain because of some loopholes in some type of contract. So read things very carefully, okay? If you have a, a partnership contract tr contract that is drawn up, you also need to read the fine print, okay? Um, aside from that, I feel like there's a lot of opportunities for socializing and social engagement even, and I feel that it's, it's really gonna be a good month. Um, actually, you know what? I did this for all the other signs, so I'm going to draw a few cards for you just to see what else is in store for you guys for love, okay? Let's see. I don't know why people like to see the card shuffle live, I guess. So love relationships. What do we have here with the Magician and the High Priestess and the Six of Cups? So this cluster of people. Okay, so we have here the Strength card, the Five of Wands, the Tower, and the Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles usually indicates to me the start of something new, and it's something very solid, something stable, something reliable. Many of you have left a relationship, and I feel here, this is um, somebody dealing with some health issues, somebody that might have, um, you might have left a relationship with somebody that had for whatever reason, a lot of health issues. They might also be very combative as well. And the relationship, it's like um, shocking things were revealed or things that happen really fast. So for example, um, harsh words exchanged between the two of you just because you know somebody had a bad day and too much has been said and you can't really retract or you can't really forgive them. So I feel like there was relationships that might have ended and then you're moving on to something new. So I feel many of you coming into this month, you're very work focused, you're very single and totally available, but I feel like you're not really looking. And so my advice for you is, you know, keep as you are, or if you're gonna date, aim for new people. Aim for new people, aim for people that have good energies, okay? Aim for people that are older and wiser and have been around and don't play games and don't give you this combative energy and especially people that have enough self-awareness, self-awareness to know what they want and they're not dealing with internal conflict. They're not dealing with their pride and their ego and they, they don't operate from that space and the relationship has a little bit more of a solid footing and it can prove to be, you know, buildable. So I guess the, the word we're looking for is, you know, long lasting stability, something that is buildable, something that you can build upon rather than this where it's like it started out on a very uneven footing to begin with and it wasn't going to go anywhere. It was going to inevitably crumble, right? So that's what I have for you here, Scorpios. Um, good month overall for, you know, a lot of family connections and things like that. But I would say once again, you know, get your priorities, um, get all your, the things you need to take care of and just let everyone else kind of deal with their own thing, okay? I hope the reading has been helpful. I do wish you all the best and take care of yourself. Have a wonderful rest of June 2018. Bye-bye.